So for 10.1, so we're skipping now to chapter 10, um, we're going to be doing geometric constructions. So let's define what that is. A geometric construction is a geometric figure drawn using a straight edge and a compass. Straight edge can be a ruler. It can be um, the side of a protractor. It can be your ID card. A straight edge is anything with a straight edge. Okay, that's what we're going to be using whenever we're making straight lines. Um, the reason why in constructions we don't call it a ruler is because we're literally just using it for the straight edge. Having the lines on the ruler does not matter because we are not using them, okay? Um, we're, so we're gonna be constructing segments, we're gonna be constructing angles, we're going to be constructing all sorts of different things tomorrow, or on Monday we're gonna be constructing triangles and squares um, using these materials. But today we're also going to be looking at perpendicular bisectors. So a perpendicular bisector is a segment line or ray that is perpendicular to a segment through its midpoint. <clears throat> So in the last unit on the test, you guys, um, we talked about angle bisectors and segment bisectors. Um, this is the exact same thing, except it's the special kind where it is also perpendicular to the segment. So for example, if I had segment AB, here's my midpoint M, a perpendicular bisector would go through M and form a 90 degree angle with the segment, okay? So that's the difference. So it, it's still a bisector, but it's a special kind that is perpendicular to the segment. because it's all just constructions, more constructions. Okay, so that's all the vocabulary for, for lesson 11.6, which we're gonna do on Monday. It's all um, constructions using vocabulary you already know, so that's why there is none. Okay, now, when we are doing constructions, um, one big thing that I need you guys to know, constructions, um, you will have compass marks and pencil marks on your paper as you are constructing these things. You want to keep those marks on your paper. So a lot of students, um, especially in the honors classes, want to erase them because they think it makes their paper look messy. For these constructions, that's how you show your work. So leaving the compass markings on your paper. Who's got Lily? Um, for constructions, those compass markings are showing your work. So it is proving to me that you know what you're doing. So you want need to keep those on there, okay? So do not erase them. Um, we're going to start with something really simple, which is copying segments. Something a lot of students like to do is look at the segment that they're copying, measure it, and then move down and draw a line. That is not what you are doing, because this is not a ruler. We are only using it as a straight edge. So we cannot just measure it and copy it down there. A lot of students also like to take this and say, well, I'll put an endpoint here, I'll make a line, and I'll put an endpoint here. There is no way to prove that that is the exact same segment, right? So we are going to be using the compass to make this. So let's write out the steps um, first. 
Daniel, you are seven. Um, so we're going to write out the steps first. And for all of these constructions, I have you guys write the steps. And then there's a picture next to each step that illustrates it. So that should help you while you're doing your homework and practicing. Um, for the test, you have to know how to do these without the steps. So you need to make sure that you know how to do them. Um, a lot of them are very problem solving. Like we'll talk through once we get to the more complicated stuff, how to make them. Okay. So let's do the steps first. Step one, when I am constructing congruent segments, if AB is the segment I want to copy, I first need to draw a ray with the given endpoint. So underneath here, I'm copying AB. Here's step one, draw a ray, make an endpoint on it, okay? Then what you are going to do is open your compass to the length of the segment. So like you can see in the picture, we're gonna take our compass and we're gonna open it to the length of segment AB. And then here's the important part. With the same compass setting, so you do not move the compass at all. Place the compass on your new endpoint on the ray. You will draw an arc that intersects the ray. And then you will label the point of intersection. And that will give you a congruent segment. Okay. Jen. Eleven. Hi, Christian. I know it's warm. Okay. So let's do this together. So you need your compass. You need your straight edge. So get those out. Those of my people that just came in, if you need a compass, you can get one from the front. Here's your instructions. We want to construct segment XY so that it's congruent to segment AB, which is the given segment. So first step is we draw a ray with a given endpoint. So let's draw an endpoint and let's name it X because that's what they want us to name it. Let me zoom in. And using your straight edge, here, let me turn it over. We're just going to draw a ray. So draw a straight line through the end point. Oops. Okay. So that's our base where we're going to start. Most constructions just start with that, drawing an array through the, um, to start, to give us a base. Okay? Is everybody with me so far? Yeah? Okay, get out your compass. You're going to put the tip of your compass on point A, and you're going to open it so the pencil touches point B. Okay? So just like that. You put the tip of your compass on point A, open it far enough so that the pencil touches point B. And here's how we're going to prove that we know what we're doing. Without moving your compass, so without opening it wider or closing it, just move it down. Put the end point on point X. And we're going to draw an arc that intersects that ray that we just made. Okay. So let me do it one more time. I'm going to put my compass with the endpoint on A and the pencil on B. And then I just move it straight down to my ray. The endpoint goes on X and I make a mark there. So I draw an arc. Okay. This point of intersection is Y. And now we have segment XY congruent to segment AV because my compass did not change openings. Does that make sense? So we know that it's the same size. 
So I want you guys to practice doing number two. Construct MN congruent to segment RS. So do the exact same thing, number two. I'm going to walk around and help you. Keep the marking there because that's showing your work. Do not erase the compass markings. So I'm going to do this one really quick. I'm going to put an endpoint and draw a ray. Label it M. And then using my compass, I'm going to open it up to the length of segment RS. Bring it down and make a little mark. And that is MN. Not too bad so far? Okay, so let's look at number three. Construct segment QJ so that QJ is equal to TR minus PS. Um, <coughs> first of all, if I wanted you to make a segment that was TR plus PS, could you do it? How would you do it? Mm-hmm. You would make it as long, well, how would you measure TS? Because there's a space in between. So if I was making TR plus TS, Jen said we could just do this. But is that right? No. There's a space. So what could we do? Um, measure TR. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so this is what she's saying. Let me do it on the whiteboard. So she's saying we do our ray. Let's say TR ends up being right here. And then we use this as our new endpoint to make TS here. And then this would be TR and this would be PS. Does that make sense? So how could we do it with subtraction? You measure PS and then I just put that like an arc on the line right there and then take the new measurement. Mm -hmm. Subtraction is going backwards, right guys? So if addition is just measuring the two and putting them together, to do subtraction, I measure the longer one and then take away the little piece that I'm trying to subtract, right? So let's do it. So first we're going to start by drawing a ray. So construct your ray. We're going to label it Q. Okay. Technically it's a ray. We have to do the bigger one first. So let's construct um, 
a segment the same length as TR first. So copy TR. Right there. Put a point at the intersection. Then we need to take away the length of PS. So let's measure PS. And I'm going to flip my compass around and put the endpoint on the intersection that we had just made. Hold on, I think I moved it. And draw an arc going the other way. can't really see it. Do you guys see what I did? Okay. So here, that second intersection is point J. So just to reiterate what we did, this big long one is TR, right? And this little space in between is PS. So I subtracted them and QJ is this segment right here. Okay, not too bad. To add them, I would just line them up next to each other like that. Okay, but to subtract them, we have to go the opposite way. So this is the length of PS. Okay. Segments, feeling okay? All right, let's talk about copying angles. So constructing congruent angles is also very useful to us. It's a little bit more steps, but it's not too bad. I know it's a lot of words, but I just wanna make sure that we have it all in there for you. So step one, you are going to draw a ray with a given endpoint. So we always, almost always start with an endpoint and array. So if I'm copying this angle, I start with array. And I put my compass on the vertex of the angle. And I'm going to draw an arc that intersects the sides of the given angle. It wants you to label the intersection points. Um, we may or may not do that because it gets time consuming after a while. So on the original angle, you're going to open up your compass however big you want, and you're gonna draw an arc that intersects both legs of the angle, okay? Now here's what we need to do. With the same compass setting, so you do not move it. Put the compass on your new endpoint, and you're going to draw an arc and label the point of intersection. So what we're doing is we're creating an endpoint. This arc matches this one but we need to know how wide to open the angle. So what we do next is we take the compass and we open it to be the length of the points on the original angle. So, um, is it showing yet? No, so if you look up at the picture up here with AB, we're then going to open the compass so that it's this size. So the amount in between the angles. We use that setting to draw an arc on the ray from the new point. So we're gonna have an intersection and you're going to label it and draw a ray from the vertex through that point. So then it's going to create an angle that has the same opening 
as the, um, the one that's given. It's not that bad. It's uh, kind of a lot of steps when you write it out, but when we do it, it's not going to be that bad. You guys ready? Okay. So I'm going to zoom in so that we can look at this a little bit better. Okay, so we always start with a point and a ray. So we're going to construct an angle called X. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to move it down just a little bit. I'm going to label it X, draw a ray. Oh, that's kind of long. It doesn't have to be that long. Here's what we're going to do. Take your compass, put the endpoint on the vertex of the angle, and open it so that it will intersect um, both the legs. So if you open it too wide, it's not going to intersect. So you want to make sure that it touches both. And you're going to draw an arc that intersects both legs. Okay. So putting your point on the vertex, draw an arc that intersects both legs of the angle. And then take immediately take your compass and draw the same arc using X as your intersection. Do not open it or close it. Okay. So once again, put your vert point on the vertex and draw an arc that intersects both legs. And then go straight down and do the same thing on the ray that you made. Okay. Is everybody where I am so far? Okay. No? Okay, three, okay? Okay. Okay, here's how we figure out how wide to make the angle. Take your compass, put the end point at the intersection of um, the arc that you drew in the original angle, and close it or open it, depending on how big the last one was, so that it matches up with the intersection, the other intersection point on the original angle. Okay, so you're gonna take your compass and match them up. So it's the same um, distance from intersection to intersection. And then you'd move your compass down and draw an arc there. So you measure the two intersection points and then immediately move your compass down and draw an arc there so it intersects. Don't open, don't change your compass setting. Oh, my paper is slipping. Mine keeps messing up. So this is where you need to make sure that you're not pressing too hard on if you're using one of my compasses because it um, it can mess it up. Okay, so it's right there. Mine's this one right here. Okay. And then you have an intersection point. So put a point there and draw this ray that goes through the vertex and that intersection point. And then the measure of this angle is the exact same as the measure of that angle. And you could use a protractor to check it. It should count perfectly. Karina, are you going to check it? So what I want you to, guys to do is do number five. If you want to try number six, we are going to do it together. If I want to construct an angle so that it is equal to two times the measure of the given one, how many times do I have to construct the given angle? 
if I want the measure of my new one to be two times that one, twice. So you're going to construct the same angle on top of itself, okay? Try it. We'll do it um, together, but I for sure want you to be able to do number five by yourself. Did it come out the same? So Karina just checked it with her protractor and it came out exactly the same. Now that all my people have returned, who are we missing? Mackenzie and where's my seating chart? No, I've lost. Megan and Joma. Okay, so Mackenzie, Megan, and Joma. And Megan told me she wasn't going to be here. Compass isn't working because your pencil is sliding. You might want to switch compasses. Don't break my compass. I'm going to skip it because it looks like you guys are doing pretty okay. It should come out to like, did anybody measure it? 92, 91? It's a little bit over 90. So um, 
because it's rotated, here, let me, because the picture that we're copying is rotated, um, when you draw it straight, it might not look exactly the same. But if we were to rotate our paper, this looks like it's a little bit bigger than 90, right? So that's kind of what we're going for. So you're going to make your arc. And you're going to do the exact same thing here. Wait, that did not match up. Yeah, it did. And then open it the, op the amount that the angle is opened. And draw an intersecting arc. And you should end up with something that looked like this. Okay. So uh, just a little bit over 90 degrees. And I know some of you thought that that didn't look the same, but it is. Okay? Is everybody okay? Okay. Let's do the one where we add them together. So I want to construct an angle F so that the measure of F is equal to 2 times the measure of angle B. So that means I want to make two of these angle Bs. So we're going to start with um, our ray, so draw a ray, or using your straight edge, let's put an end point there, we're gonna call it F. And we're gonna draw an arc that intersects, so look at angle B, draw an arc that intersects, both legs and copy it. Okay. What's the second step of copying an angle or drawing a congruent angle after I did the first arc? Who can help me? Mm -hmm. We have to know how wide open the angle is. So measure how wide open the angle is. Draw a little arc. And before we go any further, we have to draw the ray that intersects that. So basically, we just copied the angle once. How can I make two of them? Uh-huh. Go from this. So this is going to be your new starting point. So we might have to turn our paper a little bit. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm actually going to use the arc that I already made just to make it easier on myself. So I'm going to reopen my compass to the size of the arc, the original one. and do it again. So this actually should line up perfectly with the one we already have. Okay, so I just recopied the same arc that we already made. So I double checked its measurement and then I did it again. So open up your compass however wide the angle is from intersection to intersection but instead of using this point as my starting, I'm going to use this one and draw the intersection. Okay, am I going too fast? So what I did is we copied angle B to start and then I did it again. So I reopened my compass to the original arc length and I just extended my arc and then I opened it up to the opening 
and instead of using my first intersection, I'm going to use the second intersection and draw another arc intersecting. So connect those. So here's what we did. This one is angle B, and this one is also angle B, so the measure of angle F is two times B, right? Because we made two Bs. So what's another word for this ray if it cut it into half? Bisector. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay? I think that's probably the most complicated one. Okay, let's do angle bisectors. So turn the page for me. Or not angle bisectors, perpendicular bisector. Okay. Everybody good? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, perpendicular bisector. These ones are actually really fun because you get to make almost two semicircles. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the compass on one end point. And construct an arc. And here's the important part. That is greater than half of the segment. So it has to go past the midpoint. I'm going to underline it, greater than. So it has to go past the midpoint. And that's all we're doing. And then using the same compass setting, you're going to use the other endpoint to draw another intersection. And you're going to label the intersection points. This time, instead of drawing a ray, you're going to draw a line through the intersection points and label the midpoint. This one's fun. Are you guys ready? Take your compass. Um, I'm going to start on B just because it's the lower one, so it's a little easier for me. Um, and open your compass so that it's greater than, ha than um, halfway through. So it has to go past the midpoint. Um, it can be, I don't care exactly where it is. It just has to be bigger than half. And very carefully, you want to draw an arc. And it needs to go pretty wide. So it has to be at least a semicircle. Okay. So using one of the endpoints, open your compass bigger than half, draw a semicircle. And then do not change your compass setting and just flip it over. and do the same thing. Okay? So, using one endpoint, open your compass. Using one endpoint, open your compass so that it's greater than half. Draw an arc. And then just flip it around, don't change the compass setting and draw a second arc using the other endpoint. It should cross in two places, right? So you take your straight edge and draw a line through those two crosses.
So this is a right angle right through your midpoint. It'll work no matter how big you make your compass as long as your compass setting is bigger than half. Why does it have to be bigger than half? If it's half, you won't get the midpoint. What would happen if it's smaller than half? They won't even cross. They'll totally miss each other. Okay? So they have to be bigger than half so they cross. So try that eight and nine. It's the same thing. Guys, I think that's all we're going to have time for. So while you are doing those two perpendicular bisectors for eight and nine, I'm going to pass out your homework. Um, on your homework, the very last two questions are angle bisectors. So just skip those, and we will do them first thing on Monday. Okay? But you should be able to do the entire rest of the homework assignment. If you are using one of my compasses, feel free to take it home. However, please do not break them. And eventually, at the end of the unit, I will need them back. So please make sure that you can also take care of them because they are water. So don't leave before you get your homework. Which two are you not worrying about? The last two, good. I know this is hard. I know it's frustrating. Just keep practicing. It will get easier, I promise. Thank <laughs> you.